Oh, okay. okay. Right. This is my daughter Morgan. Hi. Hi. Good. How are you? So you get an internship? <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Right here to work. Yeah. yeah. You can jump in. That's okay. Uh, so, can I know I just asked the question, but I want to delve into it a little bit further. Sure. Um, what had you Obviously, it seems obvious that it's, it, it, it's also very helpful for it to be uh, a PR kind of thing to bring in Jared Dudley. If you had to choose between Jared Dudley and someone else, uh, how much did that play a part in the decision? Right. It, it wasn't an overwhelming factor, Dave. I, I guess if anything else, it would probably be more like a tiebreaker if, the, if the, you know, there were a tie. Uh, but you know, the, the fact that Jared fit on the court and in the locker room, those are the two most important factors. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, he fits in perfectly with our style of play. We've been really looking to, to open the floor up more for our guards, for Eric Bledsoe and Brandon Knight in particular, to dribble, really penetrate, get in the lane. And uh, that's a lot easier to do when you have a guy who's a 42% three-point shooter. I think Jared is eighth in the league in three-point shooting. Uh, you know, to open the lane up. And he's, he's a very good catch and shoot player, as you know. Um, so that, that's the on the court part of it. Uh, off the court, um, you know, he's, he's basically like a coach. Uh, I think Brian asked him, you know, if he has coaching aspirations, that's the way he talks, that's the way he thinks of the game at a high level. Um, so, you know, we like that part of it. And then the fact that, you know, he, he had been here before and then he really wanted to come back here, I think that helped us because he wasn't an unrestricted free agent. There was an unprecedented amount of salary cap space and money in the marketplace. And as you can imagine, a guy like him had a lot of interest. There was a lot of interest from other teams. Uh, so um, it was a, uh, a plus, obviously, but it wasn't the reason. So. Yeah. Well, that doesn't mean we, we didn't necessarily look for them or pursue them. Uh, you know, coming off a 23-win season, it, it's difficult to get in the mix for those guys. Most of the elite players, uh, as you know, want to go to winning teams. I think, you know, coming off the heels of the first two years, Mike was here, uh, we won 87 games combined. It was uh, an easier sell. Um, you know, next year we feel like uh, we'll be a lot better than you know, 23 win team. Um, but you know, most of the free agents say, you know, kind of prove it, show me, and then, then we'll talk again a year from now. So, uh, you know, we, we reached out to all the top guys, engaged their interest level. Um, but you know, we I, I think we one of the other factors for us is we, we brought in more players through the draft I think than we anticipated. With having the three guys on the roster with uh, uh, Dragon Bender, uh, Marquise Chris, and Tyler Ulis. Um, you know, going into the draft, we, we thought we might consolidate picks more than we did. We ended up doing that sum, as we know, to get Marquis Chris with the eighth pick. Uh, but that, you know, that changed our thought process a little bit. Uh, but really, you know, if you look at this year's free agent class as a whole, um, there wasn't a whole lot of star star power. Just uh, Kevin Durant, obviously, went to Golden State. Um, you know, as we reached out to him and his representatives, um, and, and you know, after that, we said, Let, let's let's do what's best for our team. Let's be realistic about what we can do coming up 23 month season, and let's go aggressively after the best guy we can get that you know we think we have a good shot to get we will fit him well with their group and um, you know the market moved so quickly this year with Jared we flew out to San Diego to see him on, on July 1st not just with Jared but the market in general we flew out to San Diego to see him coach Watson uh, Robert and I met with him for, for dinner in uh, San Diego and uh, yeah, yeah, went after him aggressively quickly got the deal done so uh, coming in even, even a few days into free agency it was, it was coming pretty clear obviously the prices were really but there were still uh, power forwards out there in their middle 20s and younger 20s range that could have been at about the same price as Joel did. Did you make a conscious decision that you wanted to get back your older player who could who wouldn't be pushing for as many minutes as possible for the next years to prove themselves for the next contract? Well, it's a good question. So with Jared, we, we, we talked about um, you know, what we projected his role to be, which is probably starting uh, initially, and then at some point over the, the, the course of the next two or three years, he's on a three-year contract, and you know uh, there's a chance that he might maybe go back to the bench role as Dragon Bender and Marquis Chris emerge. Um, obviously, it's an open competition, not no minutes or promises guaranteed, but uh, that's, I think, the most likely scenario at this point. And he said, I'm fine. He said, that, that's who I have in my whole career. He said, in Washington last year, I think he played 81 games. He started half the game. He started 41, and then he came off the bench for 40. So he's been in both roles. Uh, he's smart enough to realize, um, you know, kind of where he fits into a team. I think where he fits into the league. Um, so, it, it, you know, and, and he's still got, we think, 
three good years left at least, probably more than that, uh, his age. So, um, you know, we, we, we laid out a number of factors on and off the court, style of play, locker room fit, um, fit with our team. Um, you know, one thing that was touched on briefly, but not a lot, is he has a relationship with Brandon Knight as well from Milwaukee. That I thought they were two of the better players on that team. That, you know, if we were the surprise team in the league three years ago, they were the surprise team in the league, I think, two years ago in Milwaukee. You know, so they had that common bond, uh, you know, relationship. So all those all those things factored in, and, and we, you know, um, once the market started moving quickly, we said, let's let's not mess around, let's go get them. And we did that, you know, I think on the night of July 1st. You guys got a pretty reasonable contract. Was there a conscious effort to overpay the player and kind of let this market even out as people start spending more and more money? And then in the years going on, it's going to, and not everyone will have all this money to spend. Maybe yeah. the contracts are going to be as bad. Yeah, you know, we, we always try to give um, players fair deals, you know, they have to agree on it as well, so we want to be fair, especially in the case of an unrestricted free agent uh, who's coming from another team, you know, we don't have as much control over that uh, situation, so, um, but, you know, it was, it was somewhat of a, uh, uh, a factor, you know, in terms of what we can do, not only what we're going to do now to help our team in the short term, but what, what Jared's contract and what having him on the roster will enable us to do going forward, and uh, Jared and his uh, agent Mark Bartlestein were great. Um, you know, as part of the uh, arrangement, we negotiated the um, contract to be structured the way that we wanted to structure it, which, uh, uh, you know, starts at its highest point. Uh, you get 4.5% uh, increases or decreases with another team's free agent. Uh, so we started Jared as highest number, and then his salary will go down next year and a little bit the year after that. And that allows us to do um, potentially more things down the road with more flexibility going forward. So, uh, you know, again, it's, it's, you know, a lot of this business is about uh, relationships, and we have, a, we have a very good relationship with Jared and his agent, Mark Bartlestein. Um, and you know, they felt strongly that Jared wanted to be a son, uh, so we tried to make him a fair offer, and uh, I think we did that. Luckily, we were able to, um, you know, strike a fair deal that uh, hopefully is good for Jared and, and potentially could benefit us as well going forward, especially next year and the year after when the salary cap jumps up. And, uh, as you mentioned, I think we're projected to have more money than other teams to, to you know, hopefully get them back in the mix for elite free agents next summer. So, uh, Jared, Mirza Toledovich, and John Moore are all signed for about the same amount of money. Uh, obviously, there's uh, a John on your team last year. Yeah. What was the deciding factor on the big who to sign the one on the that's a good question. We had, we had conversations with all of them. Um, you know, Jared and uh, Mirza, I think, signed on the same day or agreed on the same day on July 1st. Uh, we, we liked all of them for different reasons. You know, you know, Mirza and John had probably the best years of their careers for us last year. Um, you know, Jared, we, we just thought um, a couple of reasons. His, 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 his fit in the locker room, uh, his ability to lead, was a little more vocal than those other two guys. And again, I'm, I'm not saying this negatively in any way about them. Um, uh, you know, his, his, his relationship, uh, you know, with the fans, with the community. Uh, he's played with Brandon Knight. He's played uh, in Phoenix before. Um, you know, he's in some, a lot of ways he's a coach on the floor. You, you, know, you know, we have a, a team of good guys. You know, good people. They're a little on the quieter side. Uh, he's not very quiet. You know, so uh, that, that you know, vocal ability in the locker room, on the court, it, 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 you know, can benefit us. Uh, he and PJ will probably be the two most likely vocal guys on the team. So uh, it was really close between those guys. As you can imagine, they're all good players. We would like all of them. Uh, at different levels, right? I guess the levels were all pretty close based on what they ended up getting. Um, just at the end of the day, we thought he was the best fit for our group. And so like you said at the beginning, it was all, all things being equal. Yeah. The history of this guy will tell you all the difference. Yeah, it's, as I mentioned, it, it wasn't a determining factor with, with all the other factors being fairly close. It, it, I guess it, it, in some ways it could have been a tiebreaker. I should have looked this up before, but I'm pretty sure it was Brandon. They did well when they were on. You can kill it.